up next on the Pro Wrestling Report for our time Saturday night. We take a look back at WWE Raw and SmackDown. And the road to WrestleMania continues with our guest host again in studio, Big Sexy Kevin Nash. We talked to Kevin about the matchup between Triple H and Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. All that including this week's event center, Diamond of the Ring, right here, right now on the Pro Wrestling Report primetime Saturday night on My24 Milwaukee. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report Press on Saturday night. Davia Nelson sitting alongside Davis, the Activity of the WRC legend back here, one time knockout Hall of Fame, straight edge Divas champion hero on yes. Saturday, March 27, 2013. It's the We're 30th. on our way. It's the 30th. You're I, right. I know you 30th. like to live in the past. Well, you know. Let's get to the present right now. And the present is all about WrestleMania. We are on the road to WrestleMania, David Hero. WrestleMania just one week away now. And coming up in a few minutes. In one week, it's WrestleMania Nash. Eve. And we'll be shenanigans. Shenanigans? Yes. Uh, Kevin Nash will be joining us here on this very broadcast in just a moment. But before that, let's go to this week's WWE report, David Hero. And uh, this past week on Raw, a lot of stuff Monday happened. Monday night, a lot of stuff did happen. But the real headliner, if you will, of the night was the confrontation between The Rock and John Cena with legends asking questions, including Brett the Hitman Hart, Dusty Rhodes, Jerry the King Waller moderating, Booker T, Mick Foley as well, and The Rock owned John Cena oh, Monday night. It was a no contest. I'm hoping that's how they wanted it to go. I hope they wanted John Cena to be like the wounded animal in that The Rock was just hunting him down because that's how it came across on television. And for everything John Cena had to say, Rock had not just a response, but what seemed to be the perfect response. The Rock just punched him right in the mouth. I mean, Straight that, that's what he did. No yeah, just, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, but did this do what it needed to do, which was to put people, uh, get people invested into their rematch at WrestleMania? I think what they're trying to do is show that it's not a lock that John Cena is going to beat The Rock at WrestleMania. They want to show a little bit of a weakness to John Cena, maybe the uncertainty that he may not believe in himself, and he now needs to talk himself up to beat the Great One on the grandest stage of them all. Did they accomplish that? Not yet. I mean, yeah, they showed him that he's that he, like he's broken, that he's intimidated, that maybe he feels deep inside he can't beat The Rock, which now makes me want to see what happens on Monday night. There they done did it. Two more matches also made for WrestleMania this past Monday night on Raw. One announced during the broadcast, the other just after. The first of which, Chris Jericho versus Fun. Dango. Who would Fandango's have first in ring matchup as Fandango and WWE on broadcast tele on television rather will occur at WrestleMania. Who 29. would have thought Chris Jericho would come back to wrestle Fandango at WrestleMania? Why not? Uh, obviously they must have some big things for this kid. I mean, it's not like he's in there with just an average mid card guy. It's I mean, Chris Jericho is a star. Mm -hmm. He really is and Dancing with the Stars, Chris Jericho against Fandango. There might be a dance-off. Oh, Lord. You know, here's the thing about Fandango. They have invested so much and continue to invest so much into this person, this character, if you will. I don't think people realize yet how much they're going to like Fandango. I know. They're going to like to hate him. Same thing. The fans aren't going to get behind him as a baby face ever. Well, maybe I can't say ever because that's forever. But um, I, I really, I really think that it's going to be an interesting match. I think it's going to. Some people are going to be surprised at that match on how good it could be, and maybe even more surprised by the outcome. Well, let's not forget that Chris Jericho, as you said, is excellent, and he's going to, if need be, carry this to a great match. I don't think he needs that though, because Fandango is talented in the ring. Uh, we haven't seen it though. We don't know. We don't know what he can do. He. Okay, if you're Fandango, imagine Damian Nelson as Fandango. This guy? D doing that, you know, waltzy, salsa the gimmicky thing down the ramp in front of 80,000 people, and that's your first televised match. It's great for Fandango. Imagine the nerves. The butterflies. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Well, the other matchup made is for the for the Intercontinental Championship, Miz versus Wade Barrett. Barrett defending the title against Miz at WrestleMania. Who did the Miz wrestle last year? He was in that tag match, right? He was in the team. Die? Team Johnny yeah, versus so. Team at no, Team Teddy. I don't remember. Yeah. I do remember he headlined WrestleMania 27 with John Cena. Yes, and he did. Yes, the yes, WWE he, yes, yes, he did. That speaking was two of, years ago. Speaking of Team Johnny, though, is, uh, well, a little surprised to see Johnny back on no, SmackDown last perfect. night on WWE television. Imagine Johnny Ace. Well, first of all, The Rock wants no part of Johnny Ace. Well, it's people part. John Laurinaitis. He, get, he doesn't want nothing to do with him. Imagine now if John Laurinaitis goes to John Cena and says, hey, I know The Rock's weakness. I know how you can beat him. What's his weakness? I'm not telling you. How does Johnny Ace know what it because is? Because Johnny Ace is the talent relation was the talent relations guy. Mm. Um, was he fired off TV? How did he even end up off TV? I think he, he was, was fired. fired out. Yeah. Uh, a little bizarre, but I think they explained it well on SmackDown last night, saying Johnny Ace saying, you know, hey, you're the people's champion. I'm all about people power. Uh, still, it was good. It was entertaining to see Johnny Laurinaitis, John Laurinaitis, back on WWE television. Uh, you know, a week of uh, very, very deliberate TV from WWE, and while people talk about The Rock, uh, you know, he's only there every several, free, every couple weeks, couple few weeks or whatever, he came back not only on Raw, but also on SmackDown, his show, if you will, this past, uh, this past or just last night, rather, mm -hmm. on uh, the Sci-Fi Network. So he is doing all he can, I think, to put forward his best foot as it pertains to promoting WrestleMania. The question is, will it work? And we'll all find out next Sunday at WrestleMania at MetLife Stadium. There's a lot more still to come, though, here this week on the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime, including this week's Diamond of the Ring, the Event Center, and discussion on TNA Impact Wrestling. But first, the road to WrestleMania continues with our guest host, Kevin Nash. That's when we come back right here on My24 Milwaukee. We are pleased to announce the formation of the Pro Wrestling Report Hall of Fame. The PWR Hall of Fame is being created to honor the best in professional wrestling without any politics whatsoever. It's simply about respect. The Pro Wrestling Report Hall of Fame is pleased to announce the second inductee for the inaugural class. The next inductee into the PWR Hall of Fame is a name that is synonymous with devastation in pro wrestling. They dominated the tag team wrestling scene in the 1980s and are still kicking teeth in to this very day. They're simply one of the greatest tag teams in the history of pro wrestling. Please join us in welcoming Axe and Smash of Demolition to the PWR Hall of Fame inaugural class. The PWR Hall of Fame induction ceremony will be held in Manhattan on Friday, April 5th at the Hotel Pennsylvania. Tickets to the ceremony are available now at pwrshow.com. The PWR Hall of Fame. It's about respect. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report primetime Saturday night. The road to WrestleMania continues just a couple of weeks away now. And last week we talked about the main event of John Cena versus The Rock for the WWE Championship. Well, joining us in studio again this week, big sexy Kevin Nash. Kevin. With the proper colors. You look so much better in green. What are you wearing that three-year-old design shirt for Super Friends? Well, that's kind of a... It's all wrinkly. Kind of a, 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 a homage to my buddy here. Yeah. See? Oh, hey, See? Dave. Yeah, 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 there you are. Wow. <laughs> Kevin Ness, thank you for joining Actually, us Actually, everybody in my family has one of these. I just want you to know that. I'll have to... My son and wife. Get but, you some more Nelson Pink. <laughs> no, I have to. <laughs> uh, Great, Ben. It's been great discussing WrestleMania with you. And now tonight, another big matchup. It's Brock Lesnar versus Triple H. And that match, a rematch from SummerSlam. This is uh, one of Brock's, uh, well, three matches. It's his third match. So far <laughs> since coming back to WWE last year. But his first WrestleMania in a very long time. What's in your in uh, nine years. Yeah, a long time. So uh, he's had three more matches than Scott. Yes. Your take on this matchup featuring, well, one of your best friends, Triple H. You know, I think that the uh, the real measuring stick in this is the fact that neither of them have had, I mean, together with them had five matches, eight matches. I mean, yeah, well, five, and five is high. Well, in the last five and three, right? Hunter's only had he's had Punk, Taker, and Brock in the last year and yeah. a half. And um, this will be only the, this will be the third match for Brock Lesnar this in the last six, year. This is, this is, so both guys are going in with a uh, 
with about three matches underneath the belt. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I think that uh, if there's anybody that has an advantage in that situation, of course, it's Hunter because he's I mean, he's just a better worker. Yeah. You know, just he's a, he's a he's a better pro wrestler, but. The last two matches we've seen with Brock Lesnar, they haven't been wrestling matches. Right. They've been fights. And I believe after his uh, UFC run, I think that uh, kind of works for, for, for Brock. Mm -hmm. you, could, you could get knocked out real easy <laughs> and, uh, and be going home a lot sooner than the time cue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could get blown up, hit you with a right hook, and it'd be a good, it'd be like, <laughs> Okay, well, I guess that's the finish. <laughs> <laughs> At least so, now it is. Yeah. <laughs> so there's there's a little wild card in there. Yeah. You know, I I think I'd pretty much uh, I'd be watching watch what I said before the match anyway. I, mean, I don't think I'd really want to get in there at, at 53 years old with Brock Lesnar and just kind of go on the fly. But, Brock is legit tough guy, scary, don't want to cross him kind of guy. And he's like. You know, that freaky, you know, North Dakota farm strong. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about wrestling bears, he's wrestling moose, huh? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, lift the barn. <laughs> How far? <laughs> How high? Uh, you know, I think his, like Brock's whole family, you know, it's like sisters and everything. His sisters are, his one sister that I met, I met her at the, the Meadowlands years ago when he first broke in, was, I mean, beautiful girl, but just, you know, everybody's just a big, sturdy, you know, big boned. Mm -hmm. you know, sturdy. That's a good word for it. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, <laughs> it's a, they're, a, they're a very good breed of people. <laughs> you know, if, if, if it becomes, uh, you know, the, the zombie, uh, Apocalypse, the uh, Lesnar family probably is going to do pretty well. <laughs> do you think Brock Lesnar can work with Triple H where he's calling the match, telling the story, or will ego get in the way if Brock feels he's not getting enough? You know, I think Paul's such a professional. Um, he's going to he's going to direct it to where I mean, he'll make sure that it, it it's what it needs to be. I mean, he's that good. I mean, if you can have a ladder match with me. <laughs> rest my case. <laughs> the, the defense rests. Some people out there are not too pleased that this match is happening. Triple H not full-time on the roster. Brock Lesnar not full-time on the roster. Does that really matter? Or is it, it because it's the second time in, in less than a year, much second like time, correct, Rock yeah. and... But not Cena. a WrestleMania rematch, but a rematch nonetheless. Does does that play a role as it pertains to WrestleMania, the grandest stage of them all? You know, I think it's it's like anything else. You know, when uh, when they had the Hurricane uh, Sandy benefit, mm -hmm. I mean, it's you know, it's Bruce Springsteen, it's Bon Jovi, it's Billy Joel. It's when you have something of, of that magnitude, um, you're looking for you know names, star right. power, people that have been there done that and you know does it does if i'm in the locker room and i've been there for five years and i'm not getting a payday am i am i, am I ticked off absolutely but you know what do something about it mm -hmm. don't wait to be anointed do something about it get over and be in wrestlemania next year i mean that's now when that's, you say do something about it does that mean tweeting about it or? no i mean get over you know get in the ring don't you know well, 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 who are you referring to tweeting about stuff? People have done that. We've heard this in the mm -hmm. past. But you see where it gets you. It might get you a little. It might get you a little bump in the. But the next thing you know, it's like clear. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, a lot of people uh -huh. say though. You say step up. You say do something. Time of death. <laughs> Six twenty-one. <laughs> but a lot of people say that it's the company's job to get people over. It's the writers. It's it's you've booked. You've been at the head. You you know what it takes. Well, How maybe, do you explain that to the fans out there? But the thing is, you know, you can you can write, you can write, create, you can do everything, and, and on paper it looks like this is going to be perfect. But if it's not executed by the guys that go and walk through those right. through those ropes, if the execution's not right. It doesn't matter. It's just like, you know, it amazes me that my wife can go online, 
read a recipe and make the meal. And it's good. It's good. <laughs> I mean, and it's like the first time she makes it. Occasionally, you know, it's, it's not great, but it's, I mean, she's, and she's like taught herself to be a good cook, but it didn't happen in a day. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's happened over the course of, of, of 20 plus years. So it's the same thing with these guys. You know, the guys that are in these, in, in these, uh, in these main events at WrestleMania have been doing this a long time. And even though it is maybe the third match they've had, I mean, they they know how to cook. Yeah. You know, they know how to cook. They know how to read the recipe. So and we, we, if, you're, if, if I'm in, in charge, I'm going to go ahead and go with what I know is going to deliver and not throw some wild card stuff out there. You know Hunter's going to work the crowd. He's going to look at the audience, whereas some guys today just want to get all of their stuff in and not pay attention to what the audience response has been. And the thing was, you know, especially for WrestleMania, being there live and watching the events, now that they're at these giant arenas, it's almost, it's, it's difficult to watch the match. Yeah. You're, you're watching the ring, but then you're watching this. And, you know, for me, it's like, I want to go home and watch it. Mm -hmm. I want to hear the announcers. I want to hear, you know, I want to. Which you did that last I year. I did that last year. <laughs> Remember, I was, I, 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 he's I, leaving Sunday morning? Yeah. I, 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 did, I did a signing Sunday and then I took off because I wanted to watch uh, Triple H and, and Undertaker and I wanted the drama. Yeah. I wanted the camera angles. I wanted, I wanted Kevin Dunn's production of Undertaker and, and Triple H. So, I mean, I wanted to, uh, I mean, I didn't have a problem by you know going and, and spending seventy bucks. They don't reimburse you. No. I thought you. That's it. not in the Legends deal. No. 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 I don't. Know. But uh, who's your money on in this match, Triple H or Brock Lesnar? If if Paul was in the office, I'd say Paul. But he's in the office, so he's you know he'll put, he'll put, I'll probably, I think Lesnar will go over. Who needs it more? I mean, do, do they need to put over Brock Lesnar to keep his development? I don't know what his deal is. You know, I don't know if he's, if he's, if he's three and done. It doesn't look like he's, he has a whole lot of dates. Yeah. So, I mean, I, you know, that's, I mean, I don't know the, 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 the particulars of that, but from a standpoint of, I just don't see uh, Triple H, I'll say his working name, <laughs> so that people know I'm talking to people, who's Paul? <laughs> Big show, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, a lot of them use the name Paul too to show that they're. Mm, all, uh, those people. See what Not I'm the ones here. that you know. The other guy talks about. You know, like twenty Swiger. years ago. Yeah, twenty years ago when we met, it was like we shook hands. He said, "Hi, I'm Paul." I said, "I'm Kevin." It just kind of stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever think twenty years ago he would be in the spot he is today? No. I mean, I knew he'd be successful. He probably didn't think it either. No, I, I don't. I, and but the thing is, for me, is that, and I, I've told him this, you know, on, 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 a, on a private and personal uh, level, that I'm so proud of the, of, the, of the job that he's done. You know, he's done such a. He, he, he's got he's got vision. Um, he expressed that vision to me two, three years ago, of where he wanted to take developmental, where he wanted to take different aspects of the business, and not only has he taken it where he's wanted to take it, it's actually production wise and and developmental wise is is, is far exceeded what, what I even thought, you know, could happen. So he's done a really great I mean, he's a he's a very good wrestling executive. He's got a great mind for the business. And I mean I'm I'm just proud of the job that my friend's done. He's old school though. And he did an interview with WWE.com recently saying people should be looking at the past. The guys you were talking about earlier, the current wrestlers and performers should be looking at the past not the future and going back to that and and uh, we've heard a lot of people say that you've been on the road with WWE you see what's happening in the back a lot of people are spending time on social media or playing video games or doing whatever and there are a few guys who are watching tapes still a few guys who are studying that old craft of professional wrestling you know, when, when, when I came back it was I wasn't watching anything that the people were doing I was still watching my my Bruiser Brody Stan Hansen's you know yeah collection yeah, that's, I mean, it's just the, the stuff you go back to, and it's just, you know, it's methodical. It's, I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, everybody knows that I basically have, have toned a luchador style down to more of a methodical, robotic, 
five move kind of big man thing. Just in the last six months. Yeah. <laughs> Before that, I mean, it was just, you know, I mean, it was like pedal to the metal. Just, you know, no restrictor play, just boom. Surprised you weren't wearing a mask. Uh, I, and I do sometimes. <laughs> well, wait a minute. There was at one time. He had that other green outfit and... No, I was the... Uh, and now, you know, they come out with the movie. Right. I get no. I should get royalties on that. You know, well, watching that entrance and that whole production of you coming out as Oz, that is a movie in and of itself. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Clash of the Champions. I think it was like ninety-one. It's, it's, it's or as disturbing as Requiem for a Dream. Like, where did they get all that green light? I was like, this uh, is. It's you, you got. We got to put it on our website because you got to watch. It's chin. It's jaw dropping, folks. <laughs> you should be behind the rubber mask. <laughs> Big Sexy Kevin Nash going to be with us again next week. We're going to be talking about Kevin on that same night while we will be airing your segment. We're going to be at the Hotel Pennsylvania right across from Madison Square Ooh. Garden. Shenanigans in the concrete jungle. Tickets moving very fast. VIP tickets still available. Big party. It's I, 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 I'm already starting to feel it. Your annual event in WrestleMania. You're the headliner. You're the host. And uh, I can't believe all the friends you got lined up coming out to that uh, that Should be. It's good. I mean, and we're adding them daily. Yeah, absolutely. Madison Ivy might show up. <laughs> <laughs> Big sexy Kevin Nash, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Pro Wrestling Report, joining us again next week. And uh, we'll be right back right after these short messages here on PWR Primetime Saturday night. The biggest party during WrestleMania weekend is coming to Manhattan. PWR presents Shenanigans in the Concrete Jungle, hosted by Big Sexy Kevin Nash on Saturday, April 6th. But Kevin won't be alone. The party starts right after the WWE Hall of Fame induction ceremony, just steps away from Madison Square Garden. VIP tickets include free drinks and more, and are only available in limited quantities. Get your tickets now for this tremendous Hall of Fame after party right across the street from Madison Square Garden. It will be epic. This week's Robert Hack Diamond of the Ring goes to the lovely and talented Bella Twins. Bree and Nicole Bella get the big victory over the Funkadackles this past week on WWE TV and now head into a match at WrestleMania teaming with Road Scholars against Brodus Clay, Tensai, and the Funkadackles. And you gotta wonder if our good close personal friend, good old JR, with his barbecue sauce will be calling that match at WrestleMania. But this week's Robert Hack Diamonds of the Ring the Bella Twins. Welcome to the PWR Event Center, brought to you by Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. I'm Linda Kay here to bring you the news on all the latest events coming to the Milwaukee area. WrestleMania 29 is next weekend, and PWR is heading to New York for a spectacular weekend of events. The PWR Hall of Fame ceremony will take place Friday, April 5th in Manhattan. Be there live as Axe and Smash of Demolition join King Kong Bundy for the inaugural class. Armando Estrada will be the master of ceremonies, and you can get tickets to the Hall of Fame for only $15 each. There will be a special meet and greet after the show for all attendees. The Shenanigans meet and greet party will be on Saturday, April 6th, right after the WWE Hall of Fame induction ceremony across the street from Madison Square Garden. Kevin Nash will be the host of the event, and joining him will be 23 other stars, including the recently announced Terry Reynolds, Eugene, Tony Atlas, Demolition, and names just added this week, including Gold Dust. Get your tickets now at pwrshow.com, where you can also find a schedule of must-do events during WrestleMania. You can also get the Shenanigans All Access Pass, which gives you an autograph from all of the stars. Order it now at pwrshow.com. GLCW returns to Circle B in Cedarburg on April 20th with matches featuring Robbie E., Mr. Anderson, and Tommy Dreamer. Get your tickets now at blizzardbrawl.com. That's it for this week's PWR Event Center. I'm Linda Kay, and we'll see you at the matches. All right. Steve, Andy, what's the number for 911? How do I get a hold of them? Because there's, you see this larceny. What? You are a thief. You what are, are you a talking thief? about? You where I want, I want my trophy. It's good to want things. I don't have your trophy. My, are you that sore a loser, Mr. Gore? Are you that sore a loser that you can't admit defeat in the 2012 PWR draft that you have to resort to stealing my gold and stealing my trophy? I don't have your trophy. 
Relax. I mean, do that Seinfeld Serenity Now gimmick thing you do. Yoga now. Are you? Well, work on your breathing. Inhale. Let's go to this week's TNA report, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, David Hero last Thursday night on Impact Wrestling. Bully Ray told us everything we needed to know about the Aces and Eights. What a well done piece it was, over the course it of the night. It was needed. Absolutely. Because was. Aces and Eights, has, have they, it's been going on for so long. Some people didn't see the beginning. Others have turned out and come back in and turned back out again. It was great how they the showed the yes how they how they showed everything how it all came together how it showed Al Snow missing on the gut check mm -hmm. Devon voting the guy in mm -hmm. all the shenanigans back and forth all the crazy stuff that went on and the way he told the story I think made the storyline stronger. Give credit where credit is due, and that is to the creative group in TNA Wrestling because they formulated this plan. Stuck with this plan. Nine months. When was the last time the plan. a storyline took nine months to come to fruition? In this day and age of professional wrestling, it has been a very, very long time. But Forever. Wow. Ever. And, and everything made sense. That was the key thing about it. It was like nothing was a stretch. Nothing was that something they were reaching for. It was like, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. How about that? I, I see that now. Makes sense. I mean, I was able to follow along from the beginning. I know that that was more or less done for people like you. What do you mean? Well, I'm just saying, I, I was able to follow along. I was able to follow along from the first explanation all but, the way through, through, through to the end. Okay. I knew what was going on from the... I knew nine months ago it was going to be Bully Ray. Come on now. Didn't you see my comments on YouTube? No. I, I said I, it was going to be Bully Ray. Okay. AJ Styles, though, another hot topic in TNA Impact Wrestling, and the evolution of AJ's character has been profound because he hasn't said a word. No, and you know what the thing is? It's He's kabuki-ish right now. You don't know where he's. A brand of I mean, even when we saw him out after Impact in Chicago, it wasn't the AJ that we knew. Still in his own little world, you know, own Spondent, little bubble. If you will. Yes, just awkward. Two very good things happening in TNA right now, and uh, we saw more of that, of course, this past Thursday as Impact was live from Jonesboro, Arkansas. And uh, how do you go from Chicago to Jonesboro? Oh, well, it was still a hot crowd. Very yeah. hot crowd. Uh, not every city can be Chicago, David Hero. Well, I don't, uh, right. But, uh, you know, these, these Not two every city wants really, to be Chicago. Th these two things really the focal point of what TNA is doing going forward, and they should be. And we also found out that the rematch between Bully Ray and Jeff Hardy has been made. TNA uh, President Dixie Carter putting the information out about that and how that will happen. So it's not over. It ain't over. Jeff Hardy's still in the title. Well, he's still he's the number, number one, one contender. contender. And that'll happen at, you know, they'll have their big match at Slammiversary, you got to figure. Yeah. In Boston, I understand you're going to be in Boston. Uh, we're still working on the details of that plan, but speaking of details, that's this week's TNA report. Next week, David Hero, our coverage starts Monday night with PWR Live. All the way through the week, we are covering WrestleMania as only we can. Monday, as well as PWR Live on YouTube and PWRShow.com, be the booker. Yes. But wait. That's my show. On Tuesday, be the booker. That's my show. On Wednesday, be the booker. Now we're getting into overtime. On Thursday, we will be broadcasting from Manhattan, New York City. Oh, my goodness. Once we make it there, we've made it everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be broadcasting Thursday. It's our big kickoff to WrestleMania broadcast, a special episode Thursday night. Of course, Interactive Live also happening Thursday night on PWRShow.com and on YouTube. Then Friday, David Hero, hashtag hot tag from Manhattan, yes. Times Square, Saturday night. Prime time. Kevin Nash joins us again. And how about what Kevin had to say tonight about big uh, about Triple very H and Brock Lesnar? Very honest. Very honest. Very candid. And I'm shocked that he picked Lesnar in that matchup. How can you be shocked? Well, because Triple H is his best friend. Yeah, he knows his weaknesses. Next week, though, Kevin, our week I can't wait to see of WrestleMania 29. His thoughts. Uh, well, that because CM Punk is going to win at WrestleMania, he will be the one of the 20. You might have to one. get some ink in New York. My ink pen's perfectly fine. Uh huh. That uh, all next week. You can go to pwrshow.com for details on all that coverage. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time here on my 24 Milwaukee. For that one, this is Damian Nelson saying so long, everyone.